This is my final speech about someone very important in U.S. history who is poorly known. It's about Alfred Loomis, who made a fortune figuring out how to electrify North America. And then he became a leading scientist, building the most sophisticated biophysical lab in the country in his house, where people like Einstein and Fermi hung out. Then as World War II approached, he led the team that invented radar. And he also played a big role in the Manhattan Project. He invented the Loran Aircraft Navigation System, which was the default air aircraft control system until around 2010. There is one book written about Loomis, Tuxedo Park, named for the secluded place his house was in. It's by a member of his extended family, Conant, who has a limited scientific background, so it covers many episodes, but isn't very deep. For example, Loomis built the first ultrasound emitter and showed it destroyed bacteria. Conant considers this a clever hobby. This is where I came across Loomis a few years ago. I patented a device that uses a specific light wavelength to kill methanogens in cow stomachs. And the device can include an ultrasound emitter to keep LEDs free of bacteria as Loomis showed. Not a hobby. Loomis was born wealthy, but he became his era's version of a billionaire. In the early 1900s, utility companies were formed to provide electricity to new industries and the public. But their stocks and bonds were not attractive. They were regulated, local, dependent on unknown public demand. They couldn't accumulate capital and build transmission. Loomis invented the public utility holding company. It got utility company equity in exchange for financing generators and transmission lines. Loomis's company consolidated operations and interconnected distribution systems, which was key to reliability and reducing costs. The price of electricity dropped Loomis's company issued their own stock, which soared. He became very rich. By the mid-20s, copycats formed holding companies that did not spread transmission lines, only took profits. Loomis predicted speculators like these would destroy value in his industry and in many. In 1928, he cashed out and was much ridiculed. After the stock market crashed in 29, he bought the blue chips at fire sale prices. And so while most got poorer in the 1930s, Loomis got even richer. Organizing electricity transmission is actually really important. Loomis knew it was critical to boost electrical consumption, like on farms, not just generate power. So he organized a group that funded engineers and land-grant colleges who invented heaters and lights that made farms profitable and generated demand. Today, we have to do the same thing, by the way, roll out high voltage lines across the continent and develop demand for electric vehicles and manufacturing. Loomis was a Republican, but in the 1930s, the Republican Party veered into isolationism and anti-government populism. By the time Hitler invaded Czechoslovakia, Loomis allied with the Democratic Roosevelt administration, and this is where the story gets really interesting. During the 1930s, Loomis's lab had uh, advanced acoustic research into radiation, bioelectricity, metrology, microscopy, and sound detection. Loomis was gifted at engineering scientific technology. He invented the first system 
that measured and dis, uh, brain waves and discovered EEG patterns of REM activity. He developed technology to analyze radiation spectra and capillary waves. He was the leading US researcher in acoustics. At the same time, his cousin and close friend, Henry Stimson, another Republican who joined the Roosevelt administration and became Secretary of War during World War II, Loomis had made Stimson rich and Stimson was Loomis's oldest friend. Also at the same time, in the 1939 and 40 period, the US was supplying arms to England and these boats were being sunk at astronomical rates by German U-boats. There was no way a US could fight a war in Europe if the majority of soldiers would die before getting there. So Loomis was put in charge of defense research for microwaves. He bought a building on the MIT campus and turned it into the radiation lab or rad lab and funded it until the government did. He partnered with Ernest Lawrence in doing this. Lawrence is the guy who developed the cyclotron at Lawrence Labs here in Berkeley. Within a year, the MIT rad lab had invented radar that could detect U-boats and target them. It spotted German airplanes before they reached England and uh, enabled cover for D-Day. It has been said that the atomic bomb ended World War II, but radar won it. Loomis provided the scientific basis, organized and funded a radar's development. Loomis also helped finance Lawrence's cyclotron in Berkeley and was involved in the development of the cyclotrons that produced the atomic bomb material in Tennessee. During the Manhattan Project, Oppenheimer, Lawrence, Groves, and Loomis would discuss what needed doing, and then they would tell Secretary of War Stimson or rather Loomis would tell Stimson, his cousin and friend, it would get done without red tape. When Lawrence needed uh, big amounts of copper, Loomis fixed it with the Guggenheims who controlled copper. Lawrence needed huge amounts of iron. Loomis arranged it with the chairman of US Steel. At the end of World War uh, II, Loomis developed Loran. It was the global method of aircraft navigation used by all commercial aircraft until the advent of GPS around 2000, even the Soviet Union. Loomis held the patent on Loran. It's too bad Ashwin Ramaman isn't here because it includes something Starlink might appreciate. Uh, three stations are timed with their own crystals and the middle station is called a master the other stations adjust their oscillators, crystal oscillators, to remain in sync with the master. And the master is part of several triads. So if the signals, the station signal fades, it could be bridged. Why haven't you heard of Loomis? He wanted it that way. The physicists of his era knew how important he was. Einstein and Oppenheimer, Luis Alvarez, one of the most brilliant scientists, physicists of the 20th century, wanted to use radar in a system to land planes without visibility. Loomis overcame the scientific hurdles to make it possible and the moral and financial support to overcome failures. Alvarez considered him a great man and a friend. Lawrence wrote that had Loomis not existed, radar would not have advanced. Business and political leaders knew it. Roosevelt, Franklin Roosevelt, said that after Winston Churchill, Loomis was the civilian who contributed most to World War II's victory. Loomis didn't need history. He was known by those who mattered to him. After the war, he was scandalized by, or he scandalized high society by divorcing his first wife, who was in a sanitarium. 
He remarried, moved to a small house at the end of Long Island, and focused on his children. He never gave an interview. His great-grandson is Reed Hastings, the founder of Netflix. Uh, Hastings' mother's name, maiden name is Loomis. Perhaps Netflix should consider a series about Alfred Loomis, or maybe Reed Hastings knows Loomis wouldn't want it. Thank you.